Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise to War video, I will show you a guide about the shadow. And here we are. But before I get started, I must say thank you Decimus Maximus, he is a community member of ours and without his reports I couldn't have brought you this video. Because I don't own the shadow, it was Decimus Maximus who shared all his reports with me and also he tried various builds, various builds. And in the end, we ended up with a build which I am presenting to you now. We call it the Sustained Poison Damage build. And just as always, let me first establish what the strength and weaknesses of this commander is. So, since this is the Sustained Poison Damage build, I will immediately jump over to the Undertaker ability. Because this build evolves around this skill tree, this skill tree, as well as this ability here. Now if we have, take a look uh, to, to the Undertaker talent, we see that our normal attacks deal additional damage and they become AoE. And this is our first strength with the Shadow. If you max this out, your AoE damage will become poison damage. Now this can be a strength as well as a weakness. It depends on your enemy commander if he is carrying the effect High Alert. High Alert is a hardcore counter against the Undertaker. Now, if you realize that somebody has Undertaker, uh, if somebody has High Alert, just don't max out Undertaker. Just put 14 points into this so your normal attacks don't become poison damage. That way you can deal a bit more damage to High Alert commanders. But you could argue that you wouldn't want to fight high alert commanders anyway with the elemental commander. Yeah, that's right. But if you have no other commander ready, this is what I would do. I would just take one point away from Undertaker. Then we have the Plague. Plague is something which is also nullifying healing every three rounds. This is great to have. This is so great that you're shutting down healing commanders such as uh, Arwen or even Galadriel. But Watch High Alert. High Alert is in play. You will have a hard time with this. So, Plague or Delayed Plague. Which one is better? We have found out that Delayed Plague, if you have maxed this out, deals a bit more damage than Plague. That's it. It's just easy as that. If we now continue and uh, look at our Respect 3 skills, we have Ring Wraith, which is further increasing our elemental damage we deal not just only the shadow benefits of this but also his troops like the arbalests or his corsairs then we of course have to go for the morgul poison because this is also additional poison damage for each of our normal attacks this is great to have and we also have some buffs going on with this and debuffs could be our second weakness like the first one was high alert our second weakness could be debuffing mechanics. But rest assured, since we have a lot of debuffs, it is very unlikely that the debuffs we need get dispelled. For example, Ring Wraith is considered three debuffs. Burn is a single debuff, Poison is a single debuff, as well as Focus is a single debuff. What we would like to have on the enemy is Poison. So here you have a 33% chance of Poison being removed. But then we also have Morgul Poison, this is also a debuff, Delayed Plague is a debuff, and so on. So, we have lots of debuffs, and it is very unlikely that the Poison debuff we have on our enemy is getting dispelled, which is great. Now let's look at his Respect 5 skills, and decide why Shape of the Void is so good. First 4 rounds, Commander, each round a certain percentage chance to gain follow-up. If you have maxed this out, it will be 90%. And 90% is very reliable. And this is making the shadow so strong. You have follow-up for your first rounds, which is making you kinda bursty. This isn't his front load damage build. His front load damage build would evolve around the lower defenses as well as the tech weakness. But I we tried it out. It didn't work out that great. I mean, look at this, 25% chance of this procking. So what does this mean? In a fight, it will maybe 
proc two or three times and that's it. It's just not reliable enough. So why depend on luck alone if we have something much more reliable? Lower defenses has a 50% chance of proccing. So I'm not a friend of these low proc chances. And we have seen the reports. The sustained poison damage build came on top of that. And this is the build. So in the end, you will have a build that looks pretty much something like this. Now let's summarize what we have gathered here. First, let's re repeat the strengths. He has AoE damage, he has elemental damage, and also burst damage. This is a strength. His weakness is he can be countered by high alert, can also be countered by cleansing mechanics if they have a lot of that. And of course, since we have three different troop types in our army, we are vulnerable to madness. So these are our three strengths and three weaknesses. And by the way, get ready to receive a lot of troop bosses. This is something we have seen regularly with the shadow. He is losing a lot of troops. Your economy will suffer a lot. Now let's have a look at the itemization part because this is so interesting. The shadow is such a versatile character that it is pretty hard finding the right spec with the right gear for him. But in the end, we have found out that in regards to blue gear, that let's start with the weapon here. This has proven to be his best weapon. And I'm not joking. Like this weapon is giving you a lot of might, but what is very special about this is the flavor balance. Because now normal attacks, it attacks damage, increases by plus 10%. And the shadow is dealing lots of auto attacks. And I'm not joking when I say that this item will probably, when you've maxed it out four times, will be your best weapon, even among the purple weapons. So this will be your best weapon until you get a golden item which you have strengthened three times. Only then would it be worth changing this weapon with your golden weapon. Then moving on, rough breastplate, this also might give defenses for your melees. We are experiencing a lot of troop losses, but this will help them at least a bit to survive. Also melee vigor, I think that's a given. We don't talk about that. And the same logic applies for your helmet. Cool. Now let's move on to the purple gear part. Looking at our purple gear, at the very top I have listed the battle axe with the flavor concussion as well as flay. This would be my number one priority. If I would switch over to purple gear, I would be going with this. But guys, I mean the Urukai pike with balance stone is still better, even if you have fully maxed out battle axe or the other purple weapons here. But if you still want to make the jump to purple gear because you can't resist the, the purple color. I would be going with Concussion. I like the idea of reducing damage of the enemy units so I have less troop losses. This is great for sweeping, this is great for PvE in general, and I have to experiment how this is working out in PvP. Not sure, I don't have unlocked the shadow, and we don't have this as a flavor yet. If we have more reports coming in, I will make an update about this. Now let's look at Flay. I think Flay is kinda not really needed, but let's say you're fighting someone who has high alert. You might argue that you now can take one point out of your Undertaker ability so your auto attacks don't become poisonous and they switch over to becoming physical damage. Now then you can get value out of Flay because now at your first attack ignore physical damage and this is what i would be using if i were to fight high alert commander not ideal you don't aim to fight them with the shadow anyway but if you have nothing left with play you can work around high alert all right let's continue easterling spear this is just a nice second option if you don't have the battle axe i think pierce is also nice again this is ignoring high alert you can still fight against that but I would probably stick to the blue pike to be direct then we have the carver also a nice option it has decent stats might focus and it has smite but this too can be countered by high alert and that's it for the weapon having a look at the armor pieces I would say scale mail is 
by far the best. It has not just only the best sets, it also has interesting flavors. I think I would be going with Gallant just for some more damage for the Shadow overall. But if you want less troop losses, you could go with Melee Bigger. bigger. I think I would be going with Gallant. I just want to deal more damage with my Shadow. If you don't have the scale mate, the Superior Hallberg is still a second option you could be wearing. Now I'm playing on a roll playing server, which is why I prefer the scale mail, because I don't have to wear the superior hallback with the fire resist. But if you are playing on a non-role playing server, you might argue that superior hallback is better to counter all the convener characters who have fire dealing troops in their composition. All right, moving on to the helmet. Now this was a difficult one, but I still think that the bone mask is overall the best helmet he can equip. Now you have to choose between two, three flavors. And I'm not sure which one is simming better towards the end. Like, is it Relief? Relief is bringing steady damage. This is reliable damage. Or maybe Manipulate. This is also very reliable. Reducing the troop losses you have. Would be very nice for sweeping. Maybe even for PvP. I don't know. I have to test this out. I don't have the Shadow. Or what about Hysteria? Could be devastating. Because this is also kind of reliable. It is proccing every two rounds, but the enemy needs to be affected by madness as well, which is bringing a, a luck factor into it. So not sure about these effects here. You just have to see which is working out for you or which fits your playstyle more. If you want reliable damage, then go with this relief. If you want few group losses, maybe manipulate. Do you want Devastating damage when it procs, maybe hysteria. But yeah, this is my idea about the bone mask. And if you don't have this, I think you can make do with the full helm. Once you have this, you have lots of might, as well as inspire. And I think inspire can be devastating if this procs for your Morgul Arbalest. Remember, they deal good damage, but with this, they also get 30% increased damage every two rounds. And imagine how this will scale with the poison damage they are already dealing. And their poison damage is further enhanced by the Shadow's R3 ability. Now let's have a look at the accessory. I think we don't have a lot to choose from. I would be going with the Bone Talisman because it has lots of focus and our damage scales with focus as well. Evil Man's Strength might be okay for our Corsairs. But if you don't have this, you can still switch over to the Drums of Moria. Here we have overall good stats. I mean, that's pretty much it. Drums of Moria is pretty standard. Now looking at the Golden Gear, this is very interesting. I think my number one choice would be the Axe of Khazad Doom because it has Cleave and Cleave is physical damage, which means we aren't that vulnerable to being countered by high alert. And that alone is for me reason enough to consider Axe of Khazad Doom my number one choice. But if you really want to commit into your elemental damage, then I think Morgul Blade would be your go-to. Morgul Blade as well as Sandclaw both share these two special effects to the bottom, being Blight as well as Poison Coating. I'm not sure about which is scaling better in fight, but I would probably go with Blight because Blight is also scaling with the focus stats we have and we have a lot of focus but i'm not sure maybe you want to be a bit more front loading with your damage than poison coating would be more your go-to but uh, if you want to scale with focus then blight is the better choice i don't know guys like if you main the shadow please do me a favor and share your reports with me or or let your opinion in the comment section below this is still subject for experiments and once I have unlocked the shadow, once I have got the right gear, I will share what reports I have with you. But in the meantime, I would appreciate it if you can show me what type of shadow you are running. Alright, moving on to the chess piece. Now, I think Warborn Battleplate is overall a solid choice. Lots of might, lots of defenses for your trolls and it has also speed for your trolls. You know, they are already so slow. Let them be at, at least a bit faster. And this has the flavor of fortitude of soldiers as well as resilience of soldiers. I don't know which one is scaling better, but I think I would be going with fortitude of soldiers because this is damage mitigation and towards every damage you receive. 
not just elemental but also physical. If you don't have the Warborn Battle Plate, I would be going with Bone Armor, it does Might as well as Focus, and you know, with Focus, we scale in our damage. And Resilience of Trolls is the flavor we would be going with because we will running Trolls in every of our troop compositions and having bonus armor for them is a must go to with this armor. Now looking at the helmet, I think Cask of Pride would be his best choice because this has the flavor melee suppression in it. Melee suppression allows you for the first three rounds to mitigate the damage your melee units receive by 30% if you have maxed this out. And remember, we have very squishy units. We want to ensure that they can stay alive and our trolls will benefit a lot by this melee suppression. If the trolls stay alive, they can defend their weak damage dealing arbalests or corsairs. They are very squishy. If you don't have the Cask of Pride, I think the Warhammer is very interesting. It has the best stats for us, like Might as well as Focus. And it is giving armor for our Arbalests, which is great. And it has Discord as a special flavor. Now, you might argue that this may not be so handy because in the end game or in the later seasons, people know how to counter Madness. Every player will have a helmet called uh, Horseman's Helmet, which has Madness Immunity for the first three rounds if he has maxed it out. Which is why I don't consider the Warham with Discord his best choice. I think this is a nice to have gadget. If by any chances the enemy doesn't have that Madness Immunity Helmet, this can be quite devastating. Even more than the Cask of Pride. Now, in regards to his accessories, I'm not quite sure which one is the best. Um, maybe it is more dependent on the situation, but let's let's have a look and talk about this. So the Signet of the Barrows, I like this one a lot because we are experiencing a lot of troops we lose. Maybe by giving them more HP, we increase their survivability. And also this has focus in it. Focus is scaling with our damage. This is nice to have. And it has Blitz as a special effect. Let's assume that we get to strike first in the very four round. Now, we reduce the enemy troops who then deal less damage to us because they are fewer in numbers. Maybe this will increase our survivability overall. So this is my idea. But maybe, what if the enemy has lots of elvish units and these elvish units are dodging? What good is there if we now hit first? Our troops won't hit. Maybe that's where the penalty of Orphan com comes in and facilitates that with Tactical Mark. But maybe we are dealing more damage if we equip Orphan's Delivery. Maybe if we get Opportune Strike and ensure for our troops to hit with 100% max damage. I'm not sure which one of these accessories will scale better with the damage of the Undying. And I'm asking you beautiful folks again, if you have the Shadow, if you main him, if you have any of these items, what is your experience? Seriously. Like, share your opinion in the comments below. I'm curious. Now, let's also have a look at the Shadow's Respect Level 10 item, the Corrupted Holberg. I think this has overall very nice stats. I like the Might and Focus, as well as the Attack Plus for Orcs, as well as the Attack for Trolls. Since we will be having Trolls in our team composition anyway, I think this is the best armor for the Shadow. And I'm not, not even joking. We will always have trolls in our team composition. And if we have a look at this special ability, Troll Wall, we see when each round begins, when allied trolls are present, all allied units except trolls next damage received minus a certain percentage. Which is great! We have so many troop losses. Our Orc Arbalists are dying in big numbers. Our Corsairs are getting decimated. It is crucial that we get this. I think this is great to have. And if you are a shadow main, and if you want a 100% main into the shadow, why not go with this if you are fully committing to the shadow? Just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Then please lecture me in the comment section. Let's look at the troop composition of the shadow. In this case, Decimus Maximus is helping me out. But you would pretty much run something what he is doing here. A 100 mountain troll, just to ensure that your squishy backline is safe enough to deal damage and survive. The, the onslaught that's about to happen. And here you see he has kind of the similar amount of uh, Arbalests as well as Corsairs. Just to explain what, what's happening here, like the Shadow has lots of elemental damage as well as he's boosting the elemental damage of his troops. We 
have poison as well as fire damage here being boosted. And that's the idea. He wants to ensure that these guys stay alive by being protected by the mountain trolls so they can deal damage. And fortunately, in this case, this Gandalf hasn't skilled high alert, which is why the shadow can deal this kind of damage to Gandalf. But it would look pretty much the other way around if he had a high alert. But in regards to his troops, I would say that mountain trolls are kind of mandatory to your composition and the rest is really up to you uh, against what you're fighting. Like, it is universal. He wants kind of one tank unit at least in his army and the rest is up against uh, what you're fighting. Let's look at some other reports. Like here we are fighting against Gil-galad and Gil-galad is considered among the strongest uh, commanders in the game and he has very decent gear. It is so hard for the, uh, the Shadow to counter this. Now here we have a report where the Shadow is fighting Dine. Dine has Guardians and Ram Riders. They are fire resistant. Our Corsairs deal mainly fire damage. So we are already losing at that end. Now he is fighting against a pretty stacked Aragorn. He has very nice gear. Yeah, I can tell. Very nice gear and oh my god. His knights are shutting down elemental damage by a big number. Yeah, this is for sure one of the shadow's weaknesses. Also, if we compare our gear, we still need to get best and start gear for the shadow here. But what's interesting is, once you get to fight characters like this, like Galarius who are dealing high focus damage, the shadow can kind of counter them if they don't choose high alert like if Galadriel had chosen high alert this would have looked different but she is relying on her healing abilities here which is a great mistake against the shadow because the shadow too is shutting down healing with flake here we have a Gandalf Gandalf has high alert of course and this is what I was talking about when I said the shadow is weak against commanders with high alert kind of unlucky but it is what it is the only option you have here is to pick one point out of Undertaker so your normal attacks don't become elemental damage. Maybe this would feel better against Gandalf. Now before I end this video, let's also look at this final report against uh, another Gandalf. This Gandalf didn't select high alert. This Gandalf is relying on a seal that will do him no good because we are shutting down that healing with play. So. Before I end this video now, thank you Decimus Maximus for sharing all your reports you had with me. Thank you for strategizing with me. And we must admit that the Shadow is very versatile, but also he is relying a lot on the right gear. And we are far away from getting the right gear for him. But right now, this is what we have. And once we get better gear, we will release new reports with new information. And I think there is a lot of room for the shadow to improve. This was just the beginning. I can't wait for Decimus Maximus or any other who is maining shadow sharing their reports with me to see how far we can push this commander. Having said that, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. I see you guys next time.